Hi, Sarah. We're live, Mr. Zuckerman, if you'd like to begin. Uh, okay, let me... Um... All right. Welcome everybody to the... Uh... Wright Town Park Commission meeting of June 15th, 2021. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning, Debbie. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United, States, of United America. States of America and, and to, to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and, and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Uh, Debbie, please call the roll. Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rosenberg. I, I'm going to never. Sorry, be, sorry, here. sorry, sorry. I'm here. Are you here, Paul? I, I'm here. Okay. Welcome. Commissioner Cohn. Thank you. Here. Commissioner Hurd. Here. Commissioner Jackson. Here. Noted we've heard from uh, Commissioner Marino that he will not be attending. President Zuckerman. Here. Thank you. Uh, first matter is the uh, Right Town Park Commission uh, minutes of May 18th, 2021. If there are no additions or corrections, may I have a motion and a second? I'll make the motion. Second, please. Second. Oh, second. Uh, all in favor? Yes. Yes. Aye. Aye. None opposed. Thank you. Uh, public comment on non agenda items. Debbie, do you have uh, anybody who wishes to comment? Uh, nobody's on Facebook. I did notice that Linda Lefkowitz joined us, uh, but I don't. Uh, Mrs. Lefkowitz or Mr. Lefkowitz, do you have anything, a comment that you wish to enter? No, it doesn't appear so. All right. Before we get on to the, uh, the items of business, uh, I just uh, want to pose a quick question, uh, especially to Paul and Josh. Uh, what are the plans of the city of Rye and Rybrook to start to hold in-person meetings? Are there any oh. plans? Summer? Actually, I discussed this. <laughs> You're hearing this before my board is hearing this. Um, <laughs> I made a decision uh, yesterday in consultation with the village administrator that we're going to be looking to go back uh, at the first meeting in September. And uh, I have not discussed this with the board yet. And there may be board members that have a problem with that, but that's what we are going to be uh, recommending. All right. Josh, how about the city of Rye? We, we haven't decided. Uh, obviously, we have to take into account uh, the governor's order today. Uh, but uh, our, our principal concern is about trying to please people who would like to still have video access after we go back to in-person meetings and our technical ability to manage that. Um, so we will be moving back into the council chamber 
um, I'm sure in the course of the summer, no later than September, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking the same thing for the town of Ryan and commission. Um, uh, did, the, did the governor extend? I didn't see that today, Josh. You said the governor's... There, there, I, I, don't, I don't know what the content was, but there was another statement by the governor today relaxing some restrictions. I, I don't yeah. know what was said. Well, the, the question for us and for any elective body is whether we're going to be uh, permitted to continue Zoom if we want to. The, the uh, emergency order regarding public meetings expires July 6th. So since we're in June, we're well within it. The July meeting, if the governor uh, removes the emergency order, then the July meeting of all of us would have to be uh, in person. And Josh, you, you raise a very good question because I know that some people have expressed uh, to me anyway, well, what if we can't attend? Can we attend via Zoom? Can we have hybrid meetings? And I think that's going to be a matter of discussion. And there is a bill pending. I had asked uh, State Senator Shelley Meyer, um, uh, Mayor, to um, to put forward a bill. And I don't think it's exact her exact bill, but there is a bill uh, that would permit that. And not the the problem is that if you have a meeting and attend via video conference, as in the old days, mm -hmm. where you attended from was deemed to be a matter of public access where the public could, could visit you in your home or even in your hospital bed. Uh, I don't think that we want that. So legislation, I don't know if it was actually um, passed by both houses, would have uh, uh, permitted uh, board members to attend via Zoom and uh, as long as uh, the main meeting was in a, a public space that the public could attend. So all of those things are going around. I'm just, uh, I'm, I feel the same as you, that September uh, would probably be an appropriate time uh, to begin in-person meetings. Again, unless the governor uh, eliminates the Zoom ex the uh, exception uh, by emergency order uh, earlier than that. So anyway, I think we're, we're all on the same page with that. Well, Gary, and the, the legislative session ended in Albany. So I, I have, I, as you know, so I have no hope that any kind of a tweaking to the open meetings law is gonna allow, no, it is was, gonna it happen. Was, it was, it was before the uh, the legislature. I just don't know. I haven't spoken to Shelley. I don't know if it passed. I don't know. Uh, okay, it may well have been, it may be on the governor's desk or about to go on the governor's desk. I don't know the answer to that question, but I'll I'll give her a call or, a or an email. Find out. I'll let you guys know. All right? Okay. All right, items of business. Um, First item is approving change order number nine, uh, which is uh, regarding the uh, the stone wall at the at the path at a cost of thirty two hundred dollars. There is a picture uh, in the agenda package. I previously sent that to all of the commission members. Um, uh, do you want me to put it? Do you want Debbie to put it on the screen, or or is that sufficient? Or can we move along? We can move along, unless okay. anyone else wants to see it, Josh or uh, Emily. No, it's thirty thirty two hundred dollars uh, in on more than five hundred thousand. So uh, let's 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 finish those lovely ramps. All right, the ramps. Uh, let's. Uh, I'll make a comment after after we pass this. Uh, may I have a motion and a second, please? I'll Same make way. a motion. Uh, I'll second. Uh, call the roll, Debbie, please. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Jackson. Yes. 
Commissioner Hurd. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. President Suckerman. Yes, thank you. Um, comment on the ramps. I don't know if any of you have been there lately. The south ramp is completely finished. Uh, the middle ramp uh, was slightly delayed because um, there were abutments that um, the engineer said had to, re the railing had to go around it um, uh, so that a wheelchair would not hit them. My response is let's cut the abutments. Uh, everybody said you can't cut, cut them. Uh, I keep asking why not? And they said, because it's part of a, they showed a picture and it's something that goes like 12 feet down. Uh, so we couldn't. So the, the, the railings were slightly revamped to go around the, the abutments. And uh, that's the railing that's along the seawall. The railing along the uh, sound wall is completely finished. And um, we, uh, hope to have the railing done by Thursday. And we're gonna call for, the engineer will call for a, a building inspection for a temporary certificate of occupancy uh, on Friday. And assuming we pass that, then the ramp will be open for traffic over the weekend. The South ramp already got a TCO a couple of weeks ago, and that has been fully operational uh, since that time. This is pre. Uh, That's pre an old picture. Yeah. That doesn't show anything. All right. That's that's the middle ramp from the from the sand. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, really came out beautifully, as you can see. The culvert that you see that will be covered also with a wrought, not a wrought, a. Uh, a gate that is similar to the railing above and will follow the curve of the opening. Uh, that, that will be probably the last thing that's installed. Um, all right. Um, any, any comments on that, on that? We, oh yeah, the booth, the ticket booth, subject to some delay because of as I say, the supply chain issue that's affecting everybody and everything, it's expected to be delivered uh, in uh, approximately three weeks, we're hoping, certainly in a month's time and be installed. In the meantime, everything is operating satisfactorily. Uh, Russ and Vic have set up a tent over the, uh, the area where uh, the entrances, the stairs are being used at the middle ramp and um, the, uh, it's fun the, the tablets are functioning fine to uh, take uh, uh, admission fees and allow people in with permits. Correct, Russ? Yes, correct, Gary. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, next item. Gary, just a quick question on that, and I apologize. The ticket booth, has there been any change in costs due to shortage of steel or no. building materials? Okay. Just wondering. No, the fixed price, the fixed price is 19000 and uh, about nineteen nine, I think. And the materials to do the outside or exterior of the building, that's... That, that is... That right is that is out to bid, and the bid is due in a couple of weeks for the roof and the stucco. Sounds and good. We'll, we'll prop, it'll probably be on the agenda for the July meeting. Um, the, next, the next item is a resolution to authorize a grant application. Actually, it's not to authorize a grant application, it's, it's to um, support a grant application for the um, to the Westchester Urban County Consortium for uh, community development uh, block and uh, 
there are two items. Let me just go over the background. The town of Rye, the village of Port Chester, the village of Rye Brook are all members of the, of the urban consortium. And uh, the city of Rye is not, but because uh, the town is an owner of the property, Westchester County has in the past uh, allowed us to make application. And ha we have in fact received um, a couple of hundred thousand dollars in grant money uh, through the consortium. Uh, this application will be done by the town of Rye. And uh, there are two items that affect Rye Town Park. Uh, the, uh, according to consortium um, policy that was established uh, last year, each community is entitled to make four applications not to exceed $250,000 each. Uh, there are two applications that will affect uh, Rye Town Park. Uh, one is to put ADA compliant mats that go from the end of our new ramps to the water's edge at high tide. Um, The other is uh, for tunnel bathrooms, creating ADA compliant uh, beach level uh, bathrooms at the end of the tunnel that goes from Oakland Beach into the tower building. Uh, the cost for the mats, uh, even though the, uh, the application mentions the figure of $250,000. That's a not to exceed amount. Ah, uh, that's a picture of a map, of a ramp, of a map. Not a ramp, a map. Uh, that would be one of the uh, mats that are being considered. I don't remember who manufactures that one, but the cost of the mat uh, is for two mats, one for the south ramp, one for the middle ramp. I believe the cost, the total cost for the two of them would not exceed fifty thousand dollars. Is that correct, Debbie? I think it's. I think less... that sounds right. Um, I uh, verify with uh, Vic, but that's pretty much what I saw. And uh, if we get the grant, then obviously the, uh, the the county would be paying for half of that. And then, and the cost to the uh, commission would be twenty five thousand dollars, split sixty forty with the town and the um, and the city. Application number two for the tunnel bathrooms. Uh, I had sent an email earlier uh, in the week to the entire commission. Uh, the problem in the tunnels, and you may recall, and I'm, I'm stating this for the public who hasn't seen the email. Uh, there, there is a tunnel that goes to a staircase, both in the north and south part uh, of the tower, going from the tower building directly onto the beach. At the top of each of those staircases is a restroom, one for men and one for women. There's no problem with the staircase on the women's side, which is the north side. The uh, south side, the staircase is completely inoperable and dangerous. And last year, the staff closed it off, uh, which it would have been fine, except that people still needed to go to the bathroom and they didn't want to, to go all the way up to the bathhouse from the beach. So people being people, they did not use the bathroom, use the seawall and they used the tunnel as a urine. Uh, condition that we cannot allow to continue. The staff originally recommended uh, replacing the staircase, which the commission <coughs> to, 
originally um, and authorize the drawing of plans and specifications by the engineer and architect. And um, the estimated cost for the final plans would have been in the $200,000 range. Debbie and I, Vic, Russ, and Gary Jane Francesco, the architect, were at the site last Friday and I looked at it and, and said, uh, we shouldn't be spending that kind of money on a staircase. The ultimate plan was that we would put a bathroom or bathrooms down in that area. Uh, not immediately, but eventually there was space for it. Um, I looked at it and said, this is ridiculous to make a stairway to go up to a non-accessible men's room that is in itself in a relative state of disrepair and um, is not accessible. Pers a handicapped person or even a person's you know, difficulty climbing stairs would not be able to use that bathroom. So um, the architect, Gary Jan Francisco, um, immediately did a plan. Um, and uh, Debbie, do you have that picture by any chance? That's the plan. Um, if you can see, that's the tunnel to the beach. Uh, you come in from there. The stairs that are at the bottom, those are stairs that go directly to the parking lot. Are you putting your arrow? Yeah, those stairs. That, that's a circular gate that does not allow access in. It will allow access out so people can actually go directly from the beach through the tunnel and out to the parking lot. Um, the bathrooms you see are for both a men's and a women's room. They would be fully handicap accessible, changing tables, et cetera. And um, would cost in, in uh, the architect's estimate, a total of $350,000. Now, if we got the CDBG grant and we did speak to um, the commissioner and he thought it was a pretty good idea. He doesn't make the decision, a committee does. Uh, the cost would be to the commission $175,000, um, which is less or at least the equivalent of just replacing the stairs. So it seems that this is a much better solution. And um, I think that it's, it's uh, an important one um, for the commission and for the patrons of the park we need to use restrooms and get, gain access from the beach. Um, Gary, can we ask some questions? Sure. So what happens to the stairway repair? Do we just leave that stairway closed? Yeah, we knock it down, Josh. We just demolish it. Okay, and so we're looking at, uh, let's say we don't get the grant, we're looking at the $350,000. We're also looking at at least nominally uh, a potential plan for 600,000 in bathroom repairs for the upstairs bathrooms. Well, if, let, me, let me just say, Josh, let me just yeah. say that. Um, if we don't get the grant, we're not doing the bathrooms, okay? The answer, the answer is going to be a porta potty, right? And that's that's what the answer is. I cannot, you know, I've thought about this a lot. I cannot justify up to two hundred thousand dollars for a staircase to go to a bathroom that is in it, itself in disrepair and is not accessible to handicapped people. So we'll either get the grant or we'll put a porta potty in there. 
but I, I just, I, I, you know, um, and that's separate and distinct. I know what you're referring to, the upstairs. I don't expect that the upstairs bathroom will, will cost, that's the maximum. And we could discuss that, not, not at this particular session, but um, how to move forward with that. Uh, the actual bathroom repair um, upstairs to redo the bathrooms will be in the $200,000 range, uh, not $600,000 range. So um, there might be extra money if we're gonna move the permit office there, et cetera, but that, that's a, a separate discussion. And the money for that is already there. And I would be happy to discuss that um, with you, the other commission members at a public meeting and go over all the numbers uh, which we, we really don't have right now, but um, that's what the estimate is and, uh, and how much work we do. Uh, right now for the ramps and the ticket booth, et cetera, um, we're delving into mostly money from the dormitory authority, the SAM grant and the CDBG money uh, of $116,000. Uh, for that. So um, we've actually tapped into very little of the parks money to do that particular part of the project. Um, but uh, I'm happy to go over that with you. Uh, we could do it at a public meeting. We could have a work session on it and go over it. Yeah, you know? I'd like to, I'd, I'd, I'd like to go over it. I, I agree that the upstairs bathrooms need rehab, but the the sticker price the six hundred thousand seems the, the, excessive. No, it won't. It won't. It won't be that. It won't be. That. I won't allow it to be that. Um, the 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 problem, you know, the six hundred thousand the the six hundred thousand dollars comes from the total of the um, all of the grants that we've received plus the matches comes to a total project cost of 1.22 million. And if you subtract, let's say 600,000 to cover the ramps, the path, the ticket booth, uh, the roof to the, et cetera, et cetera, that leaves $622,000. That's the maximum. This work will not cost that much money. We, will not allow it to cost that much money, okay? Okay, we, 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 we should have that, that discussion. Um, turn, turning back though to the two resolutions that we're looking at. Speak. I'm speaking. We, we are, are just seeing these really within 24 hours. And you know, of course, my, that is within 24 hours of your sending the information to us. You know my position. That is, I, without knowing that the city resource is there, I'm not in a position to say yes to things. Um, both these things seem to me to have, have merit. So I, um, I, I, I feel confident enough of finding money for the mats to be able to say yes when we get to vote on it to the mats, but I am worried about the expense of the, of, of the bathroom and fitting that into the city budget, even, even if we get the grant. So- Let me just say this, Josh, Josh, yeah. let me say about that. Um, the work doesn't have to be done next year. I mean, it should be, it's gonna be in one application or actually it's two applications. Um, the CDBG is a three year program for, for making the grants. Uh, the work can be done over a longer period of time. Um, the, what we're up against here is that the, the, the program came out fairly late. 
within the last month or so. The due date is June 25th. And unlike some of the other programs, like under the CFA with parks or with LWRP, there are constraints that are really, really important that we have to show. And that is because of the, uh, the situation of the park in the city of Rye, it's really difficult to call it low mod, which is what a lot of CDBG is. So the way we are able to get funds is to make everything accessible and especially for the elderly. And we have to put in all kinds of information, which Helen in the past has been able to do. And that's why we want to retain her. Um, the application is gonna be done by the town of Rye. The resolution before us now is for the park commission to support the submission of the CDBG application. I am well aware of your position, which we have discussed and will discuss further, um, of the uh, grant applications fitting into the city's budget. It also must fit into the town's budget. Um, I would not be asking for this to be done if I didn't think that it was really essential that we create bathrooms there, or at the very least, uh, make the attempt to do so. Gary, uh, this is Emily Hurd. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not on video, but I have a couple questions. Um, it sounds like sort of a town of Rye timeline is driving the application for the park. No, um, it's not. It's a, okay, so it's not, if it's something that we won't, the timeline, the timeline is the County of Westchester timeline. They said. And, and sorry, you. what exactly is the timeline? The application has to be submitted by June 25th. But We've only had a month. Hold it. Helen, Helen wanted to say something. So Helen, you're on mute. Uh, this application time period, which is next Friday, June 25th, is for all applications that can be submitted at this time, no future applications can be submitted. So if you want money in 2024, 25 or 26, you have to get it in by this Friday. That's the timeline that is very, very uh, tight because the money comes uh, uh, through the Westchester Urban Consortium and it's, it's money that comes from the federal organization. Everything's a little bit delayed and time pressured. So that this is a use it or lose it. You don't have to, uh, if you are awarded the money, you don't have to spend it. But if you do not apply for it, you it's gone. You will never be able to apply for this money. There's, it's a three year, it's a three year period. Um, Gary, the question I have is why is this coming up at such a late mo notice when the, if the deadline right. is next week, why are we not hearing about it until now? And why haven't we thought of another project to fit into? It seems like we're scrambling we to find a project. Yes, no, 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 no. We were looking as to what the needs of the park were. And we have a lot of needs. For example, we've mentioned it, okay? The roof on the pavilion needs to be repaired. The, uh, uh, we need new railings on, you know, overlooking the seawall. There are a whole bunch of things in addition, but none of those fit into the strictures of the program, which is to make it accessible, especially for seniors. And these are the things that will fit into it. Obviously the mats, but also obviously the, the bathrooms. So we had, you know, looking at things to do, and we had a conference uh, the other day with um, Anthony Zeno, the assistant commissioner in charge of this program. And, you know, what about this? Can we get this in? Can we get that in? 
And the answer is no. These are the two programs or projects that we can fit into the guidelines of the Community Development Block Grant Program. These are it. And, uh, they, and it's not like, okay, if we don't apply this, this year, we can apply next year. That can be with the consolidated funding uh, application run by the state of New York, because that comes out every year and it's a one year cycle. This is a three year cycle based on federal guidelines. So these applications are due June 25th and will not be funded funded until May of 22. The cycle is 22, 23, 24. The last cycle, if you'll recall, um, was put out in 18 for, and, and this commission approved and supported the application at that time in 2018 for the cycle for 19, 20, and 21. And that's where we got the money for the, both the ramps and, uh, and the, the bathhouse. Um, so that's how it works. So we did not get notice of it. You know, they, they gave us very short notice and said, hey, you have to have this in by June 25th and you know, so we we looked and, and saw what we we needed. As you know, the bath mats are, I think, a no-brainer for all of us. I think even Josh, you mentioned a while ago, what are we going to do with the old bath mats? Can we use them on the beach? Right? <clears throat> so this is I think this is low-hanging fruit. Um, but this is a competitive grant. <clears throat> there are 30 communities in the consortium. Each is entitled to four applications and it's gonna be competitive. We might not get it, excuse me. And if we don't get it, that's it for, for three years. It's, you know, porta potties, here we come. But, <clears throat> but we can try. That's why I've, I've request, that's why I sent out the email earlier in the week on this. And I actually had uh, Gary Gianfrancisco get the drawing done so it would be ready for, for an application. Um, so basically that's, that's the story. You know, if we had four applications, fine. But we, we also have two additional applications for the town of Rye. Uh, at Crawford Park. Uh, I don't know how successful those are going to be. We're going to be discussing them at our meeting that begins at 730. Um, we're, we're going to um, apply for example, uh, exercise equipment for the uh, accessible exercise equipment for the path that's going to be rehabilitated. We're not get, we can't get money for the path. Um, we're getting a SAM grant for that. We're redoing the ball fields up there with a SAM grant for that. But those do not fit into the strictures of the CDBG program because the ball fields are not really designed for, you know, the handicapped and elderly community. And the, the path is certainly not handicap accessible because uh, Crawford Park is hilly but the exercise equipment can be. And so we're putting it in for that. Is that, the, Debbie, what else are we putting in for Crawford? I don't remember. I think that might've been the only one because that's what fits the definition. And if we can get money for it, then, then we'll be able to. So, uh, accessible but, bocce courts, Gary. Pardon me? Accessible bocce courts. Right, well, we don't, don't have much of a chance on that one. But um, we're putting it in anyway. So that's why I'm asking the, the commission to approve 
uh, and support this application and then asking for the commission to approve uh, Helen as our grant writer for this application and possibly the CFA, which is due at the end of July. And we're not sure what we're doing with that. Josh, that goes along with the um, LWRP that I wrote to you about and um, that we can discuss further, hopefully at an early, early date. Okay. Yeah, Gary, we, we, we should, because I think as I've made clear uh, our position on grant applications is we need to know specifically what we're applying for so that we can operate with some certainty that if we get the grant, we can accept it and that we can fund our match. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. You know, that, I mean, that, that's what I've been trying to do. I try to let everybody know it as early time as possible as to what we're applying for. There are no secrets, even going out for a CFA grant, whether we do it through LWRP or the Parks Department, um, the, parks have, the park has needs. We know what those needs are. And the question is whether we're going to make application to fund those needs. And I would much rather that the city, the town, the commission work collegially together to do that and to come to a solution that this is what's needed and this is what we're going to apply for. The good thing about the CFA, and I know we're getting a little far afield here. The good thing about the CFA is that once it's granted, it's a five-year timeline. So it gives plenty of time to plan for the uh, doing of, of the project, the completion of the project uh, over a period of time. So, and I, I throw this one out. For example, the parking lot. We all know, know, we all know that it needs a complete renovation. We're not planning to do it this year or next year but certainly in, within the next five years, I think most of us can agree that it needs substantial work. And that's, that's what this process would, would be for. Um, so we can discuss that later. I'm happy to have a work session, Josh, with you, with any of your council members, with, with, uh, with the city manager, bringing in our, you know, people from the town and the commission uh, to go over it. I'm happy to do it. All right, but but yeah. for tonight, for tonight, I'd like to, I'd like to put these two mo these two items up for a vote, and um, and go forward. There's no obligation to pay money uh, on on the the support uh, resolution at at this particular time, and. Um, as far as Helen, she's, you know, she's at an hourly rate with a maximum. I don't even expect her to, to exceed the maximum, but we'll see. It's, it's, not a, it's not a big ask. So with that, any other comments? Uh, I just want to um, enter that uh, Helen has just reminded me that with the LWRP grant, when, uh, which is a 25% uh, match, not a 50% match, the match, um, uh, the city of Rye and frankly, the town of Rye can count uh, administrate direct administrative costs as part of our match. So rather than dollars um, paid over to the commission, the, uh, the staff time required and um, at that cost can be calculated as part of our, our match, which is a nice feature. There you have that that part. Um, but I'd like to move forward on this. I know that Paul wanted to leave a little early, and we have a few other things on the on the uh, agenda. So, Josh, uh, I'm requesting that you and Emily vote in favor of these two things. Um, may I have a motion and a second? Before before the motion, Gary. This is 
this this is not the way we understand the schedule. It's unfortunate. This is not the way we want to do this. If I were to vote yes, I would want it to be crystal clear that that is not a vote to accept any grant and it does not create any obligation on the part of the city of Rye. Can we can we all agree that? And can that go? I, I know Emily echoes that. I support that. I, I don't look. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I you just I want to. Yeah. Let Let me finish what I'm saying. Go ahead. I'm trying. I'm trying to enter into a period of comedy. Not comedy, comedy, C O M I T Y. Um, I don't think there's any reason why the city should be forced to do a project it doesn't want to do, and neither should the town be forced to do a project it doesn't want to do. I'm well aware of the uh, 1953 law. I've been aware of it for quite a period of time. And the purpose of that law was actually to allow the Park Commission to engage in capital projects that otherwise would have exceeded the bonding authority that the commission had at the time and still has. And I think it was envisioned that the city and town work together to do these projects. I don't think there's a single project that has been proposed that the city has said, we don't need that. That's not a good thing. What I've heard from, from you, Josh and Emily is that's a good thing, but we need to pay for it. And that's what we're trying to do. Nobody wants to do projects that are totally unnecessary. Uh, and if we're gonna do projects, the best way to do it is, is to have another entity with bigger pockets than we have supply a substantial portion of those funds. So and that, and that, is, that is what we're trying to do. Okay, Gary, I, I, my proposition is, is a simple one. Um, uh, I would I would vote yes, as you ask, so long as doing so creates no obligation on the part of the city of Rye to support the acceptance of grant or to pay any match down the road. Well, I, I will agree with that because if you don't want to pay any match, then we can't do the work because we are forbidden the town of Rye, according to our controller, cannot pay more than the approximate 60% uh, that we're supposed to pay. I just, so, don't, I just don't want my, my yes to be misunderstood. I would prefer to have had more time and to have been able to, to so socialize this in Rye City Hall with the city council and understand what the funding sources might be should funding be necessary. Right. Well, yeah, and th I just want to underscore, this is Emily, that neither Josh nor I are not in support of this project. I mean, to me, actually, I was like, wow, this is brilliant. We should have thought about this, but we need to, we need to have a bathroom plan that makes sense. Right. And, and the issue that we have time and time again, Gary, and I know you understand, and Paul is equally befuddled by this sort of crazy timeline that we're talking about is we're talking about $350,000 capital expenses coming up within 24 hours and being voted on in a meeting. Like, it's just not a good way no. to run no, the that's park, not. considering the, the joint contributions of the town and the city. Um, and, and so we've been over all of this before, but I just want to underscore, you know, these are good, important projects. Um, but, you know, if we, uh, and, and the city has, supported so many already this year and we can list the you know probably a million dollars worth of projects that we've supported um that's not the point the point is the timing the notice 
the preparation. Um, and, and so I agree with Josh that I think if we can get on board, if we, you know, have a promise, as you've stated, that if, if the grant doesn't come through or the project ends up being, you know, $600,000 instead of the 350 that the architect has estimated, then, then we, uh, we take a step back. Um, uh, you know, Emily, Emily, it's, it's, it's more, ba it's more, it's more basic than that. No, there's no, no, we're not speaking to any city funding obligation because no, uh, I don't, I don't have the authority to, to, to do that. Gosh, there, there's do no, it. there's no funding obligation on back on the part of the city or of the town for that. I, 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 I understand, but I, I, what I don't want is to be put in the position down the road if we're fortunate enough to go forward with this. To, to then then be told that well all all agreements are done no. be, because we said no. yes to, to the grant gonna, resolution. Not gonna, Josh, it's not going to happen that way. I don't operate that way. I'm not going to say now you have to pay. No, I mean we're gonna the the projects are here. We're going to see a if we get the grant. <laughs> B we'll go out to bid and and see what the cost is because I agree. Uh, you know. I didn't want to look. I'm the one who just scuttled the stairways because I thought it was not the right way to go to spend that kind of money, which would have no grant funding at all. Um, okay, so, so I, I will. We want accessible everything ultimately, and I will support this resolution. Thank you. Um, may we have a motion and a second, please? I'll make the motion. Oh, look, Josh wanted to make the motion. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Josh oh, made the motion. Okay, somebody does something. Thank you. Call the roll, please, Debbie. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Jackson. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Emily, you're on mute. Sorry, I was muted. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yes. President Zuckerman. Yes, thank you. And the related related item to retain Helen Thurston. Let, uh, let, if 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 I if I may, um, yes, with respect to CDBG, a little hesitation with respect to additional grants. So subject Gary to our having a conversation and identifying specific projects and and it, at least tentative costs be, before we apply. I have no problem. The, the application for CFA is due July 31st. So we have to have a, an agreement long before that. Okay. All right. So uh, on, on the motion to retain uh, Helen Thurston, a motion and a second, please. Let's go. Somebody. So moved. I'll make Thank the motion. You. You're late, Lindsay. Call me I the motion. <clears throat> Lindsay, you can second. I'll second. Please. Exactly. Thanks. Please call the roll, Debbie. Commissioner Rosenberg. Yes. Commissioner Jackson. Yes. Commissioner Hurd. Yes. Commissioner Cohn. Yep. President Zuckerman. Yes. Um, the next is the management report. Um, I don't want to go, I hope you all read it. It's a very good report. Um, what I wanted to point out, uh, Debbie just received from a lawn, uh, a year to date beach and parking revenue analysis that's attached to the management report. We, I, I think it's really interesting how Debbie's going to put it on the screen. So the revenue so far is over 544,000 compares with 407 last year and 309 the year before. 
So that's pretty good. Unfortunately, you know, it would have been higher, but we had some a rainy Memorial Day. So the beach revenue was down from previous year, but um, everything else is, is doing well. I don't want to dwell on this at this point. We'll do another one in July. Maybe have time to go over it in more detail. Um, any comments on this? Good news. Yeah. And I think I just want to, at this point, compliment Russ and Vic and Mike Cancel, um, our, our leaders of the park staff, uh, they're doing a terrific job. I have to say they are doing a terrific job. Um, I know Russ doesn't like to speak much, but uh, I saw that um, the county is really scrambling to hire people. Uh, we were at the beginning, but we are um, virtually fully staffed. Is that correct, Russ? Yes or no is all required? Is all that's yeah. required? Yes, we're, we're, I'm starting to feel like we're in a, we're in a good position um, throughout the entire park. A couple of holes to fill yet, but better right. than I had hoped for. And, and virtually the entire park staff is vaccinated fully. That's correct. So, which is good news. Okay, thank you. Um, the next, next item is the Metropolitan Swimming Open Water Championships, which we were supposed to have last year, but did not. Are, uh, yes, are, George. Are they here? Yes, 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 we're here. They're on the next screen. Hi, George. Hello. Hi, Jeff. Hello. Thank you for having <laughs> us during the meeting. I, uh, we appreciate uh, you allowing us to appear before you today. We made the same request to you two years ago that we're making today. We appreciate your cooperation and support from two years ago. That event in September uh, 2019 was planned for and all set to go. We had all the supplies, volunteers, medals, ribbons, timing company, and 131 swimmers registered. Then Hurricane Doreen came up and up the East Coast and blew away our months of planning and we canceled the event about 12 hours before our, the athletes were supposed to warm up. Last year, the pandemic stalled us again. Undaunted, we're back to ask you for the permission to hold an open water championship at the Rye Town Beach on the morning of Saturday, September 18, 2021. We are Metropolitan Swimming Incorporated a division of USA Swimming, which is best known as the national organization that produces and selects the Olympic swimmers that we cheer and are so amazed with every four years. Metropolitan Swimming let me in just pandemic time, in non-pandemic time. George, let me interrupt you in case anyone's yes. in. The Olympic swim trials are ongoing now. Yeah, yep. In Omaha. Okay, that's right. Go in, ahead. Uh, in non pandemic times, um, Met Metro Swimming has over 10,000 athletes from Dutchess County South, the Hudson Valley, the New York City boroughs, and also Long Island. So, open water swimming is one of the fastest growing sports in the world. You here at the Ride Town Beach have probably the most organized open water swimming setup in the Northeast, right Thanks. off your beach. The event that we're planning will again, yeah, it's, um, it's very impressive. The event that we're planning will again stress safety. We'll be working with the Rye um, Police Marine Division for water patrols, along with lifeguards and kayakers. The Port Chester Rye, Rye Brook EMS will be contacted and on site. We'll file, file a race plan, a safety plan, and a weather contingency plan. We have an athlete accountability plan and all swimmers must attend a mandatory pre-race briefing. 
We plan to run four races in seven, seven different waves. 1K swim, a one mile, a 3K, and a 5K race. We intend to have all races conducted in the protected area between the town beach and the Playland Park jetties. The maximum participants we will allow is 300. Our setup will begin the morning of September 18 and we will plan to be cleaned up and gone by 1 p.m. All of our activities will be concentrated at the north end of the park adjacent to the Playland area. We will again ask the county to use the Playland parking lot for our event parking, which they allowed last time, because we know not to park on the streets of Rye. With your approval, we're hoping to hold a safe, successful open water championship meet at the Rye Town Park on Saturday, September 18. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chu is also here with me to answer any questions. I know, Jeff is the one who makes the maps. Yes. Oh, that's great. I don't listen. The uh, we've approved this before. Um, I'd like to approve it again. Uh, I'd like to. Ah, there's Matt. Uh, in full disclosure, I'm a swimmer and a member of USA Swimming, so um, I don't think it's a conflict of interest. No money is being exchanged. So. Uh, but um, I think that it, it's a great, it's, it's a great uh, event and it'll bring a lot of good publicity to the, to the park and to the beach. Right. I just want to be a, a point of clarification. Uh, Metro Swim is paying Right Town Park a fee. Money will change hands in that regard. Okay. Yeah, just nothing yeah. to Gary. Nothing to Gary. <laughs> <laughs> And I just want to say that the park, the park staff, waterfront, and park staff in general is fully in support of um, hosting this event. Thank you, Rose. Um, I think it sounds great. Am I able to make a motion, Gary? Yes, ma'am. I'd like to make a motion then that we um, allow the open water swim program to move forward. Second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay, none opposed. Thank you, George. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. <coughs> Can I ask All a question right. about something else? What's that? I have a question actually about the beach volleyball. I wondered if they've approached with any idea of having it. Yes, Bill. Bill, beach uh, the Monday night beach volleyball that's been going on here for years is uh, set to begin um, Monday, June twenty eighth. That will, will be the opening night. Good. Great. Um, discussion of the no smoking policy. I believe this is actually at a, the request of the city of Rye. I know that Jeff Binder spoke to uh, Kristen Wilson about it briefly. Um, uh, Josh, do you wanna just lead us in and tell, tell us what the city's doing and, uh, and what we as a commission uh, you're requesting us to do, if anything? Sure. Um... But I'll, I'll start with a request. We're, we're not really requesting anything of you. Uh, that is of us. <laughs> we, I wonder, yes, of us. We, um, we have essentially said that our parks, including parking lots, are, are non-smoking areas. Uh, non-smoking, non-vaping. And I thought that I was part of a conversation a couple of meetings ago um, here in this commission when we noted that the park generally had a no smoking policy, but not with respect to a parking lot, the parking area 
And the question was raised whether we wanted to make the parking area non-smoking as well. I didn't remember clearly the result of that discussion. I thought that perhaps we had said, yes, it should be a non-smoking area. So, so that it, it didn't become the community smoking plaza. But I wasn't sure of that. And so the ask of this commission is, what you would what we would like to do with respect to the parking lot or or do, do we do we want the parking lot to remain a smoking zone and therefore i think we would have to say something about that in our local law since our local laws apply in the park so I thought that a couple of weeks, and you're right, a couple of meetings ago, we did discuss this. And I, I recollect having decided that the parking lot was non-smoking as well. Anyone else, Gary? I remember that the discussion was brought up in the context of legalization of marijuana. And the concern was that people would consume cannabis and then proceed to drive out of the park. So I, I recall that as a discussion as well. I don't know if you guys heard me a, a minute ago. Lindsay is 100% correct. We decided to make the parking lot non-smoking so that uh, not only could they smoke or vape, but people could not smoke marijuana in the parking lots either. So then it, it would seem if, if, if that's the will of the commission, that we will have no conflict um, with, our, with our local law as crafted. We can add the park and the park may wish to amend its smoke-free policy. Um, if I may, commissioners, um, it's not my position to make policy. That is your province entirely. Um, I wanna raise concerns that have been um, discussed with me by, by staff. And that is that, as, as you just said, Josh, the non-smoking policy extends to all recreational areas of the park, but it does not extend to the parking lot. And um, as a result, that is where the smokers are chased to the parking lot. Um, the concern is if, when we make, or if we make the parking lot a smoke-free area, that the smokers will refuse to walk to the side streets, where of course it will also now be illegal, and they will instead find a place to hide and light up, which is um, more difficult for the park to patrol and also a potential fire hazard because now you've got people sneaking behind trees and smoking on kindling. So it's a concern of the feasibility of enforcing that that rule. Debbie, our, our local law provides that the sidewalks immediately adjoining, but not traversing the recreational facilities are excluded from the smoking and vaping prohibition. So they actually can go to the sidewalks. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. I would uh, also, oh, sorry, I would also assume that people can do it in the privacy of their own car in the parking lot. That's a good point. But I thought we had decided- Barry, you're on mute. No smoking period, either in the park or in the parking lot. And that the signs in the parking lot, we would need to get signs updated for the parking lot. If, if the commission is changing the policy, um, there are a number of changes that we'll have to make, yes. Oh, I, I thought we had changed that policy two months ago. No, I don't think we, we formally did. We can, we can put it on the agenda for, uh, for the next meeting and appropriately word it. Um, Why don't we do that right now? I don't know what the wording would be. That note that you craft the resolution saying that 
no par no smoking shall be allowed anywhere in Right Town Park or, or, or parking lot uh, Right Town Park property, including the beach, uh, the grass, or the parking lots. Right now, the policy is smoking of any kind is prohibited in the park and on the beach. Then it defines smoking, permitted areas. Smoking as defined above is permitted in the paved parking area only. Okay. Um, so just strike that. The, the, what we, so, okay. I'm going to propose this motion that the smoking policy of Rye Town Park and Beach be amended to read that smoking of any kind is prohibited in all areas of the park and on the beach. And I the park. Think, wait, all, in the park, in the park, including parking lots and on the beach. In other words, add the word including parking lots to the first sentence. Okay, I make and that. Then permitted area is hereby stricken. So there would be three sentences uh, left and uh, smoking of any kind is prohibited in the park, including the parking lots, comma, and on the beach. You should, you should have including but not limited to because somebody could be wading in the water and smoking. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. A, a real smoker would too. <laughs> and Jeff, did, by the way, if a real smoker wants to smoke in the water, <laughs> I don't object to it. <laughs> Jeff, just in terms of what I brought up before, as far as people smoking within their car in the parking lot, would that fall under? It would fall. It would fall. Yeah, the the car is located in the in the parking lot. You know, I think we're beating a dead horse here. Sorry. I think sufficient. The big question is this, how is it gonna be enforced? Josh, I think this puts somewhat of an onus on the Rye PD to periodically do that. Uh, we don't have, our Rangers do not have the power to issue the summons and fine for smoking. Um, it's something, Jeff, you're gonna to have to look into. Um, maybe in the same way that we have parking violators going to Rye Town, court, we can have the constables issue a summons for smoking, something to look into. But I think that- uh, Can we can we put some signs up in the parking lot, no smoking? Yeah. Okay. Motion to amend the smoking policy as four <laughs> seven. I move. Second. All second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, the hour is late. Um, are we gonna have a discussion regarding scheduling the annual community conversation? Since September 18th is now, well, I guess it doesn't matter because it'll be off the beach. Um, I, I don't think we should have it on 9-11, Gary. No, I agree. That's, that's a good point. I concur. Do you want to, A, do you want to have it at all? B, if so, should we do it on September 18th? I answer yes, we want to have it. Yes to the 18th. Except for, the, except for the fact that you just you just you just voted to allow the uh, metro open water swimming on the same day. Yeah, but they're going to be gone, aren't they? No, it's a, we usually have it in the, the community conversation in the morning, and that's when they're doing their event until they he said until one o'clock. All right, let's figure out another we, day. 
Could we do it in the afternoon? Or is that just too much? Uh, Every Saturday afternoon, people are busy. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Sunday? I was just going to say, what about the 19th? Is that a long weekend because of um, a holiday? All right, we don't have to decide. Jebby, send out a calendar, you know, a notice, and we'll just informally do it. We can vote on it at the July meeting. There's plenty of time between July and September to set it up. Yep, sure. Right, let's just get a date and we'll just put it on the calendar. Okay, we have the auditor's report. Good evening, Next everyone. Editor Scott Oling, the floor is yours. What are we doing here? Uh, yes, so I'm here with Jeff Shaver, who's the partner on the job. He was going to share his screen. We have a brief uh, eight or nine page uh, PowerPoint that summarizes the audit information. And Good, you, have five, you. you have five minutes till the town meeting. Five minutes. All right, here we go. So good evening, everyone. I'm Scott Oling. I'm joined by Jeff Shaver, and we're here tonight to discuss uh, the audit that was conducted and concluded as to the uh, Rye Town Parks activities for the year ended December 31st, 20. Next slide, Jeff. Uh, Jeff's gonna go over most of this. I'm gonna be brief on the required communications, but Jeff's gonna take you through a couple of slides on the general fund and what happened financially in the park for 2020. And then he's also gonna discuss, as came up earlier uh, in this uh, meeting, he's gonna discuss what happened in the capital fund uh, during 2020. So on the next slide, I'm just gonna be very brief. Our audit field work is complete. Uh, management has reviewed the statements with us. They, they are, are acceptable uh, to those in management. We've issued as part of this report an unmodified opinion or a clean opinion on the uh, parks uh, financial statements, which is the highest form of assurance that an auditor provides the client basically says that we believe these statements fairly present what happened financially uh, in the district. Uh, we did not find any material weaknesses in your control processes of how you, uh, you know, handle the finances of the park. And we uh, did not notice any instances of fraud. And then uh, my last slide here, uh, Jeff, is that uh, basically that uh, your responsibility uh, is to make sure that these financial statements are fairly presented in accordance with U.S. generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP, that you maintain effective internal controls that, that produce uh, the financial information that, that can be relied upon, that you comply with all laws and regulations, and in particular, since you received a lot of federal grants, that you uh, comply with all those uh, provisions, uh, and that you've provided us everything that we have requested and that, of course, as, as uh, the leaders of the organization, that you set the proper tone at the top. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff to kind of just give you the highlights of the uh, financial information for 2020. Jeff? Okay, thank you, Scott. i try to be brief. Uh, here we have the general fund, budget to actual summary. The first column is the original budget, and the second column is, any, is the final budget with any transfers or amendments. And the third column is the actual results, and the final column is the variance between the final budget and the actual results. So you see total revenues were 1,127,000 or 2,400 less than the budget. The expenditures were 1,363,000 or 10,000 less than the budget. And what's left over, um, what we refer to as other financing sources, essentially the contribution required from the town and the city of 235,000. I'll take you into some of the details on how we did that in the next slide. Here's some details on the revenues. The sales of permits, 454,000 in 2020, were up significantly over 2019. However, the other revenue categories, parking, beach emissions, and rent concessions were, were all down from the previous year, uh, all due to the pandemic. Um, revenues for the for the year were 1,127,000. Comparing that to uh, 2019, uh, total revenues were 1,208,000. So the year over year, the revenues were down about 80,000. 
Moving on to the expenditures, you can see the details um, one of 1,363,000. Um, the largest expenditure of the commission is, uh, is payroll or personal services at 697,000 and the related uh, employee benefits of 111,000. And uh, you can see that those two uh, were similar to the adopted budget. And then uh, once again, the other financing sources and uses um, is what has to be made up by the town and the city is their contribution to make the uh, commission whole. And that amount was 235,000. Uh, briefly on the capital projects fund, um, I just wanted to highlight um, this uh, one number on here, the state and federal aid receivable. At the end of December 31st, 2020, the number was $358,000. That's the remaining amount to be reimbursed by FEMA. You'll notice um, there's an offsetting amount in liabilities or what we refer to as deferred inflows and resources, which means you have not recognized the revenues yet because the timing of the, of the collection from FEMA is not known. Uh, so you have a, a deficit in the capital projects fund in the amount of that receivable. When the cash does come in, uh, that deficit will go away and it'll, it'll zero out. And also the last thing I wanted to highlight, you did receive significant federal aid during the year, 1,125,000 was the cash received from FEMA. Some of that related to 2018, 2019 uh, seawall expenditures and some of it was related to 2020. And that's, um, that's basically the summary of the capital projects fund uh, for 19 and 20. And that is all the prepared remarks we had for this evening. Um, I'd like to open it up to any questions that anybody on the commission might have or anything on the financial statements that we did not cover. I don't have any questions. Josh, All right. um, that being the case, <laughs> we don't have a written resolution. Um, may I have a motion and a second to accept the auditor's report? <clears throat> Does it mean anything except to accept the report? I'll make the motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Your report is accepted. Well done, gentlemen. Thank you. Um, all right, we have a uh, no more uh, matters on the agenda. So, thank you, everybody. Does anybody have any anything to say? Any comments before we adjourn? Gary, just real quickly. In the past, we had. Um, a fall festival at the park, which was very successful. I'd like to start opening up discussions offline um, to start planning another one for this year. It I think that's a really good idea, Lindsay. I think that that um, we should work together with with staff and um, bring back a lot of the events. I remember. Uh, we had a sandcastle event. Emily, you were very, I think you were very good at the sandcastle event, weren't you? Yeah, very talented in the sandcastle building. Yeah, well, I think we should do that again, too. <laughs> I, that was I, really fun, actually. I love that one. I'll send out an email tomorrow just to start the conversation. Great. Anything Thanks, else? Lindsay. That's great. Okay, motion to adjourn. So move. adjourn. So so move. Second. Yes. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. All in favor. Bye. 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 Thank you. Next meeting, July 20th.